Welcome back to another episode. This week we are exploring the Great Ocean Road. A new place, a new home, for a while, let me feel alive. Nothing to hold me back, take my time, just enjoy the ride. A new man, passing by, life is good, best I've ever felt. We're just leaving Torquay now. How gorgeous is that? Oh, it's beautiful. It's stunning. Great spot for a swim. Great spot. And technically, I think on the Great Ocean Road, Torquay is the place to start. But as far as we know and as far as we've read, there's literally no wrong or right way of doing this drive. However much time you've got, you can make it work. We're going to check out all the cool spots. I'm going to take you along with us. So keep watching. It's going to be a goodie. If you are new to the channel, we are five weeks into our big lap of Australia. So make sure you hit that subscribe button not to miss out on weekly episodes. Made it to Bells Beach. You might be wondering why Bells Beach sounds familiar. Well, it actually hosts the Rip Curl Pro here, one of the biggest surfing events in Australia. At the moment there is zero surf, classic. But it's a really, really beautiful, massive reef as well. So you can just imagine how scary that would be while surfing, but such a cool spot. Stopping for rolls. And today we're going extra gourmet. We're not doing our usual PB and J. I have turkey and hungry. We got these just from Kmart and they've been such a little godsend so we can actually have coffees on the road without burning our hands and using the mugs that we normally keep in the camper because obviously indoor, outdoor living with the camper is a little bit of a struggle. We can't just pop in here when it's all closed down. Um, so yeah, these have been great. We keep everything in the back, in the ute tray, and now we can just make coffees. When I say we, I mean George. <laughs> So let's see if the campground queen has done it again. I'm sure you have. <laughs> I hope so. The expectations on me are up here now. So. <laughs> okay, this is a really cool campsite. Campground queen has struck again. Check this out. What a 
to come say hi? Yeah, okay. Hello. Hey, mister. Yeah, you're very curious, aren't you? Have you had a good day? Yeah? Had a good day? Good morning. We had a pretty good night's sleep, do you think? Pretty good. The birds are very loud here. There's a couple of crows and a couple of birds that sound like dogs. I don't know what they are. But otherwise the campsite's very, very quiet. It's exactly what we needed after a couple of rando caravan parks over the last little while, which were quite noisy. So now we're just making some coffee. I'm gonna get ready for the day before we hit day two on the Great Ocean Road. Okay, so we have left the campsite. We have quite a big agenda today. There is a potential of seeing platypus, koalas. Was there another one? I think just those two. Yeah. Just those, I mean, just those two, like that's massive. And if we see platypus and koalas today, I think I've I might. I've never seen a koala in the wild or uh, platypus. Yeah, seen I think them. I might actually pass out. So I'm very excited for this. Our first stop is Erskine Falls. definitely worth a visit. It's absolutely beautiful and it's only like a two minute walk from the car park. So the next stop is Lawn Pier and we've just arrived and it looks absolutely stunning. Lawn is such a gorgeous little town. So blown away already and it's only day two. Teddy's Lookout. This is on all the itineraries on how to do the Great Ocean Road and it's also when you click on Google Maps it's like one of the highlighted things so I think this is gonna be pretty good. <laughs> So we have just arrived at the Kennet River Nature Walk. This was actually a recommendation given to me by a friend who said that there are koalas galore. It is a 2.4k there and back trail, so not far at all. It takes about half an hour, the All Trails link says. Apparently there might be kangaroos as well and some other wildlife, so really looking forward to this. My neck is so sore already, like looking up trying to figure out if I can see things. I keep thinking, what was that? Oh my God, I keep thinking that I see things, but I think I'm just so excited that my mind's playing tricks on me. Can you come down and drink from the river then? Not sure. Oh, I don't think they'll be walking on the floor. 
Yeah, but I'm pretty sure they wouldn't do that during the day. I don't know. We're still looking. What do you do if one was out on the park? I'd be so excited. No, you have to stay. You have to stay clear of wild koalas. You can't go up and touch them. I definitely know that. The track just started to get a little bit hairy and stingy. Lots of stinging nettles. Oh my goodness. Holy crapola! This is not ideal. So we've just made it to the end of the path. And we can't see anything. We did pass a guy who said there was at least one koala chilling at the very end near a fallen down tree, but the only fallen down tree I can see is that. Okay. There's a little bubba. It's sleeping, eh? Yep. Oh my god, I can't believe we actually saw one. Oh, he was so beautiful, he was so high up. And we just bumped into people who said there's a couple more down here, so... Oh, day made, babe! Wow, how good. Yes! Oh my god, we saw another koala. We saw two This is not koalas. a drill. This is not a drill. In the wild. Oh my god. It was amazing. The second one was so much further down. He was just chilling on his little perch and the way that he'd perched himself meant that he could have a snooze and not fall. That was just absolutely beautiful. Recommend this walk 110%. Obviously it's not always guaranteed to see koalas but from what we understand about the walk and the reviews it's pretty common so definitely recommend. <laughs> We're staying at is wicked. It's a free camp. It's called the Beauchamp Falls Campground and it gives you direct access to the Beauchamp Falls and this walk down to it is absolutely stunning. It says it's about 2.5 k's one to two hours obviously depending on how quickly you walk but the fact that it's at a free camp and you can just wander down is just lovely. It's such a magical little walk. We can hear the waterfall. We love waterfalls, don't we? We do. I love that. I don't know, there's something so like therapeutic about the sound of the water running. side access path as well that allows you to get right at level with the waterfall. This is so cool. That was so cool and it really pays to kind of get up early and do it a little bit earlier if you can because we've just seen a rush of people go past and we just had that whole waterfall to ourselves for a good 10-15 minutes. Yeah, it was beautiful. Early bird catches the worm. That's it. We have just arrived at our first actual stop for the day, which is Lake Elizabeth. This is the place where we've heard you can see platypus, the place I was talking about yesterday. There's no reception down here, so we didn't actually research how long it takes to get down to the lake and where the best place is to see the platypus, so that's bad on our end. We should have done that, we normally do. But we're going to take a backpack, some food, there's a couple of walking trails, so we're hopefully going to go and find the right lake and see some platypus. Promising. Platypus are definitely here early morning or late evening. 
We really dropped the ball today. Not really, but just we really dropped the ball oh, look at this so bad. with this. Gosh, this is gorgeous. But do you know what, babe? Our luck, we might still see a platypus. So we didn't see any platypus at the first lake or the first part back there, but we're going to continue the search. It makes sense that they only come out in the morning and the evening, actually. So I don't like our chances, but we're pretty good luck charms with wildlife. So search is not over until it's over. We've just found a walk that's called the Platypus Beach. This is a little track off the main path. And this takes you right up to the water. We're being quite quiet because there is the potential. We might see a platypus. Wow, this is honestly like Jurassic Park. Come on, platypus, just float down. Come on. So George was just saying that this actually got created from a landslide. And you can see that the track is quite sketchy in parts. If you are doing this walk, I would definitely recommend good shoes because it's quite muddy and it gets a little bit hairy at times, quite hilly and a bit sketchy. Lots of sunscreen because it's quite sunny in the parts where it's not in the shade. And bring some food and water because we actually weren't going to bring a backpack. I think all we did, we've been walking for like an hour and really just started to loop back around. We've just got back to the car and unfortunately no platypus sightings which is a bit sad but it was a long shot coming in the middle of the day trying to see them so now we're just back to the car we're gonna have some coffees and then we're heading to apollo bay for the afternoon and evening where we've booked a campsite that walk the lake elizabeth walk took us over two hours which we were not expecting because we obviously didn't know how long it was going to take um so yeah pretty knackered after this morning's massive walk and then that so yeah keen to just chill for the rest of the afternoon We have woken up in a very, very windy Apollo Bay. Very hot, very dry, very windy. Oh my god, I don't even know if you can hear me right now, but you can see from my head. just come down to the harbour and we can see the sand flying so freaking hard so and this is the harbour yeah this is the sheltered part so we're calling it and we're gonna start to head off because I just put on makeup before we got going and all the sand is literally stuck to my face I have a sandy face the sandman I am the sandman so yeah we're gonna call it and start to head off next stop we've got another place to find koalas arrived at a little walk called Mate's Rest and I read online that it's a super gentle rainforest walk. No steps, just really really gentle gradient. Um, great for kids, great for a short walk. I think it's about 30 minutes. It's just a loop around the rainforest and so far it's absolutely gorgeous. Look at this. George read the sign as we were coming in. I didn't stop. Classic. Um, and said that in 2014 they found a dinosaur fossil here. The claw of a dinosaur. The claw of a dinosaur. That's really recent too, 2014. It's so cool. I know, but the dinosaur's not from 2014. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> so the dinosaur that would have been here and that was discovered the fossil would have been here over 110 million years ago. Let's just let that sink in. This is just on the Great Ocean Road, a couple of hours from Melbourne. And this place, it's just incredible. That is a big tree. That is what is left of it. And I don't think 
It might pick up on camera how big that is, George. You guys see in front of it. Whoa! Wow. Hello. Life made. We just saw. Well, first of all, we went down this road that we thought there was going to be koalas, and we saw three. So that was amazing enough. We were just like, wow. What an incredible day, let's get going. We just started then driving down the main part of the Great Ocean Road and we saw all these cars pulled over, so we're like, okay, we'll get out. And there was a mama koala with her baby koala on her back. And they were just chilling, it was quite scary because they were over the top of the road, like the branch hung out over the top of the road. So I hope they stay safe because it's really windy as well. But oh my God, that was just the sweetest thing it was amazing. we've ever seen. I can't believe it, wow. That is unbelievable. Oh, those waves, babe. Oh, Look at the ones in the back. Gorgeous. Just crossing the road. Oh, yeah. wow, no it? way. Oh, yeah. That was lucky then. Yeah. Hi, darling. Oh, look, he's sliding down a little bit. Hello. Next stop. something called the London Bridge which apparently looks like the London Bridge so <laughs> let's see the weather's really starting to take a turn now it's starting to rain get quite stormy looking which is lovely but also not good for exploring so we're gonna head to camp now we're gonna set up and hopefully beat the weather fingers crossed we have arrived at camp we're in Petersburg? I think so, Petersburg. Petersburg. Um, and the guy at reception told George that koalas also frequent the park and he saw one koala attached to his door one day, like clinging on to the, like this, <laughs> clinging on to his screen door. So, so I hope I mean, the dark screen door. I'm literally rolling up the cover on our screen door just in case a koala wants to cling on. But this is our beautiful surroundings. There's not anyone else here at the minute, which is quite good. Apart from the van behind. Apart from the van behind. So now we're just going to get sorted. We're so tired. <laughs> we're literally just laughing because we're really only doing one night in each place pretty much most of the time. So the set up, set down. <laughs> the set up, set down time. And we're in sunny to hide the tears. <laughs> yeah, it gets, it gets a lot. Great. Hey, it's real life. It's hard. It's just, um, it's a lot. So yeah, see you in a bit. That wraps up the episode. From here, we actually got totally rained out. If you enjoyed the episode, give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe because next we're heading to the Grampians National Park and you won't want to miss it. See you next time.